Hi everybody, this is Dennis from the Dennis and Andy Show. I'm going to do a full review of Project Patron uh, from Aftershock Comics, issues one and two, um, by Steve Orlando and Patrick Piazzalunga. Um, what we'll do is we'll just kind of go through it. I think I'm going to like doing this better if we do a couple of issues together to get the storyline. Um, this is actually a really cool uh, start to it. Do you remember 30 years ago? The greatest defender battles the greatest predator. Whoa. So his name's Whoa. The monster that killed the dinosaurs. So they're setting up in this particular universe that obviously this monster was around after millions of years. He's the one who actually made the, the dinosaurs go extinct. But there was one man who stood in the way and it was a primordial street fight. This was cool. What That is actually a really cool kind of uh, intro behind it. He goes, extinction was averted. Woe fell, but he didn't fall alone. This is so reminiscent of Superman versus Doomsday. That's exactly what this reminds me of. The two massive titans going at it, and they basically wind up taking each other out. So it's kind of a version of, of Superman Doomsday. They had fallen, they mourned, their patron, our brother, our student, our mentor. What were we going to do without him? All of a sudden, it's a good thing we'll never know. Days after his funeral, the patron burst from the earth, alive and rejuvenated. And since then, well, just look up. There's a high-stakes casino, uh, and it's an orbiting casino around the earth. Um, because they thought they would skirt the laws because apparently they have laws about no gambling. So they decided, we'll just put a casino up in Earth. But the anti-gravity field goes in. He goes, whoa, we're slowing down. There he is, patrons back. And he's bringing, bringing them down to safety. So that, again, again, it was pretty neat. We can see that obviously this takes place in the future a little bit because, you know, we don't have orbiting uh, uh, casinos. Um, the news media gathers around, they're asking him questions. He says, hey, say hi to the family for me, Marvin. It's good to see you. But as for my plans, they're my secret. And he takes off because apparently he always flies away. Nobody knows where he's from, what he does. Here's the cool part. Here's the hanger. What does the patron do with his life? Are we clear? Clear, Commander Cohn. Uh, the patron, Reploid, is in the end zone. Good. Now get me out of this thing. You can see he spits out a mouth guard. Um, he goes, my super sense output shouldn't be any more taxing than normal, but he's having problems with it. Well, wait a minute. What? Who's this patron guy? So it's as we start to find out, the essence of it is patron did die and didn't come back, but somehow they were able to replicate a new version of him, but he's not a sentient being. He's controlled. And they have different people that we find out that's actually taking control of Patron to do it. She's the super scientist, uh, Nadia Ketz. Um, she's into what they call strange sciences. Um, she's in her lab, so she does it if they need, you know, if they need to do sciencey type missions. She's the one in control of it. He's the main commander. He's kind of the glue behind it, Commander Cohn. Um, but he's having some issues. Then we get to get to meet Mr. Muscles. So Dave and Deer, uh, Dav and Deer, he's a strongman competitor. Whenever they have to go against a super tough, powerful foe, he's the one who controls them. So you start finding out that whoever controls Patron, actually he takes their abilities and enhances it uh, uh, megaly. So it winds up being pretty cool. Uh, I like what they're what they're doing with this. Um, you can see it's like a synthoid. You know, it's it's robotic. She goes and puts the hat. The head clicks into place, and you know, so she's the new member to the team that's coming on. Um, then you meet uh, Moro uh, Ignitz. Um, he's up there. He's from the secret. Uh, Diana, the UN, uh, the job gave him. So the UN is having him spy on his own team. So the UN, they're setting up, you know, they're now what looks like the world government. Um, yeah, anyway, 
His job is to spy on it and report in. So all of these, the new person, these are all people that control uh, the patron in, in the Times. He goes in and gives them the secret information, completes the transmission, and the patron goes off and starts doing his own thing, you know, depending on who with it. All of a sudden, the patron collapses. Um, boom. He literally goes through it. And he says, he's uh, one holding up. There's, I, I'm sure that this is why he keeps holding on. Because without him, the center would not hold. And that's cool. So something happened to Cohn that was in there. That is a heck of a really interesting um, uh, ending to the first issue. Um, and you're, you're, it makes you want more right now because this is cool. This is really a different take on things. Um, you starts off right where it picks up. More panic this morning after an explosion. Um, he patron went right through the highway, and they're like, "Look, he went through it like it was tissue paper." Um, how many thousands of light? We need to go check on him. He saved us so many times. Let's go see. All of a sudden, he opens his eyes. He's awake. Get back. And then he goes, "Oh, sorry about that, folks. I must have taken a wrong turn. Nothing to worry about." And he takes off, and the people are like, is, is, is he serious? So you can see she's in the suit, and bring it home, Commander Lena, I mean Commander, and you can still see that something happened to Cone. So now they're trying to figure out what it is that actually happened to him and, and why that he basically passed uh, while controlling him. Um, they're recording everything. Uh, this was supposed to be my first day as the patron because she was going to be Cohn's replacement. You find out that what's interesting is anybody who controls them, each time that they do a mission, it takes one year off of their lifespan. So everybody who signs up for this knows that they're cutting their life short by doing this, but they do it for the greater good. Conrad Cohn hit was really one of the first to answer the call, and he was the project the heart of the project and now he's gone so he comes flying back in she's controlling him he's coming in too hot but everything winds up being good um then we do a cut scene and is everything prepared are you prepared yes all is in order these guys are in masks these are th this is very much like a like a satanic type of a ritual that they got there's no time to waste. They must be fresh. You know how father, how particular father is when it is to consuming life. And then it goes back to the patron. So they're trying to figure out everything like that. She's got a bit of a temper, you can tell. She's upset that this has gone down this way. Everybody is sad and they're, they're, they're trying to understand it. They talk about, we all know the risks. Um, we all expect to ride off into the sunset when we get here. You know, but not even the hot shots didn't expect this to happen. Um, this is a, a really cool story, you know, as they're trying to solve what happened to Commander Cohn. So they're doing all the tech stuff. So, and then here's a, a really sad part. So they take Commander Cohn, they fly him up because obviously he had a quote unquote accident uh, a while back. And they basically put his body into the sun. Now, uh, I like the idea. Now, here's Earth. The sun looks really close. Uh, I think they did it for dramatic effect. But basically, they hurl his body into the sun where it evaporates. Um, and he goes, to go out like that is kind of disgraceful. Vaporized in your last moment, basically to hide the evidence. They don't like what's going on and, and how this is being treated. Cut back to this satanic group. Keep up. He's waiting. The pack, the data package was delivered, Father. I have your satellite footage. Um, goodbye, Cone. You uh, made a fine enemy and a finer domino. The next will fall fast as they should. My mentor once said greed is good, but he was wrong. Greed is God. So... We don't know who these are yet. They're just an intro into who the big bad is. We know there's some kind of, I don't know, we're going to call them demonic or Satan type worshipers that eat uh, um, basically 
live creatures and uh, it's all about doing something here. So anyway, it's it's kind of interesting um, and it's an interesting take on the story. This is a different type of superhero than I was expecting. Um, like I said, as it started out with Superman versus uh, Doomsday, I thought, ah, we've seen there, done that. I mean, everybody's got their version of them. But this really took an interesting turn. Um, the art was pretty decent. I enjoyed it. I thought the story was engaging. And I kind of glanced over a lot of it because I really want you guys to pick this up and read it. Uh, I enjoyed what they did with the uh, with the storyline, and it they they keep leaving you little pieces to pick up. I enjoy it. It wants, makes me uh, want a little bit more to read it. I'm going to give this a CGC grade of an 8.5. I think the first two issues really captured my attention. I think it's pretty fun. It's a, it's entertaining read. Um, so read them. Leave your comments below. Tell me what you like or didn't like, and let's have a discussion on them. Uh, smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button so that we can discuss our views on this. So I look forward to talking to you all soon. Bye, everybody.